Yep. Yep. I remember this. Yes. 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 Mm. Mm. Which is like he would have the conversation with the girl, it's like a thing, but he just like play it and he can't do anything without play. Because of the initial knee bend. Yeah. And then he wants to go back and do pro golf and like practicing and whatnot. Um and he was passing about the results of his gym. Yeah. And he was giving them his workout. Was he like your personal trainer? Yeah, yeah. He was like the personal trainer for the Olympic Village team and then he was like running the team. Mm. Um and he was just like giving them the workout and stuff like that. Okay. [noise] Yeah. [noise] You guys should get like probably like minor professional corners or something. Cuz they're like Yeah. [noise] Mhm. Like high end level. Yeah. [noise] [laughs] Not like [noise] [laughs] Yeah, not like Kickstarter level. Yeah, like actual professional corners right? Yeah. Mhm. [noise] But still having it There's still hope, right? [noise] Mhm. [noise] They're still going strong. Doesn't look like they stopped, right? Hmm. No no. Oh, they have started. Okay. Yeah. [noise] Yeah. That's good. Yeah, that's a good bet. But you still have hope of like getting better though. Yeah. You still hope for a better Olympic Village? Like if you can get an Olympic Village gold medal? And I'm not saying that's imp- impossible. It's just like you hope for better but it happens. Yeah. Not a lot of people are gonna get medals. So, you hope for the best. But you still wanna be like Roy Robson or Michael Phelps. Yeah. Or one of those guys who are like [noise] Mhm. [laughs] [noise] Oh y- yeah. Well, I'm [inaudible 1:53:59.72] Mhm. But does wasn't like a bunch of other people go to Olympic Village like three years ago? Like three years ago and they went to all these different places. Yeah. Like Kelowna and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, all these places are like big cities. Yeah. [noise] Yeah, you said it. Kelowna's way better. Yeah, because of the travel. They were like, "Oh, we wanna make it as wow, make our own trip." [noise] That's what they did. It's like the Amsterdam of their time. They just got all the tourists. Yeah, so they have to like keep on like growing Yeah. That's what they do, it's like a tourist attraction. [noise] Yeah. [noise] That's awesome. [noise] Yeah. Can you just pass me the Yeah. Maybe I should sign up now and get my visa. Yeah, it's like hundreds of thousands of dollars. [laughs] [noise] Yeah, that's a lot. Like a plane ticket to Bangkok or Phuket or whatever. Oh, okay. So you don't have to pay a plane ticket? [noise] [noise] No, there's no extra fare. For your stay there, there's no extra fare. Oh, for the stay? Yeah. For the stay. So, what, you just book your hotel and you just fly there? Yeah, that's it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a tour. Yeah, it's like a tour. You're like this is my home for one night and this is my ticket for the next one. Oh, okay. So you don't actually book your hotel? [noise] Mm- mm. Oh, okay. That's good. Yeah. Hmm. Mm. So, you don't have to book, you don't have to book a resort. You don't have to book, yeah. Oh, okay. So you don't have to book, like, a proper one. Oh, okay. So you go to, you book the hotel, they book you to go to the hotel. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's like a resort. Yeah, like a resort. Mm, okay. Cool. Oh, okay. So you don't have to pay to stay there. Mm. Yeah, it's like a resort. Mhm. [noise] Okay. Mhm. [noise] Cool. Okay. Yeah. Let me know if you need my help. I can do anything. Yeah, well, I dunno. I would need to talk to Arthur. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. We can go get them. Yeah, well, I'm gonna look it up for you. Yeah, I need to talk to him. Ideally, it'd be more convenient for me to go to them. Yeah, then I would just like stay longer and then you guys can book my hotel from there, and then I would be closer to my 
yeah. in this in that question. Yeah. And it was a very slight difference, mm. but it wasn't enough for him to really feel like it Yeah, that doesn't sound good. I don't like and then he yeah. said being the kid you'll go out yeah. as his homework as well. All right. A couple thoughts I have right off the top. Um, what, okay, right off the top, I have to think, we're, we're doing the modifications, we're doing all this stuff. Um, I have to ask what quad hamstring look like from a girth perspective slash like volume, can, they, can he handle that? You've already worked hip, I'm sure you've done little quads. What are we missing here? The, mod the, the mechanics are good, or you, you've worked on that, no change you're confident it is structural mechanical pain because it's elicit you can elicit it uh you've already tried stretching hip flexors calves quads hammies so you've cleared that sense so it's not that so you said it's not it's not bone not tendon not ligament, not ligament. Muscular. muscular Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he he came here knowing knowing that he was able to feel that and not having any problems with it. Okay. Yeah. All right, what are we missing? Not really truly muscular. You haven't had any benefit there. No ligament, no tendon, no bone. Like some sort of comparison, like some sort of study done. Like I'm talking to you two today so far, so it's probably gonna be a good thing. <laughs> I'm stuck trying to figure out <laughs> Yeah, let let me know. It's this angle I right. can start real quick, right. it's over, but right. it's over. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. So uh, le leave rest out of the out of the equation. Right. Like don't. That's not. That's so far. Um, so it's infrapatellar pain that has mechanical symptoms. That is no change with uh, tendon. Sorry, with uh, muscular impact, and no neuro symptoms that could be going there. Mm -hmm. Is it quad index? Not at that level yet. Okay. Like just the stuff I've seen. So what's the what's left over? I like the idea of looking at that strength. Yeah. Can we get? I mean that that's a yellow flag for me, right? Yeah. So you said here we haven't progressive overloaded him. Yeah. You have room for some taping down the line, but that's not going to solve the the main root of the problem. Yeah, I understand. I understand. So then um, here's what I would do. Um, I would outline what you've tried. You have a couple weeks till he sees ortho, right? Um, I would pick your top three to five things that you've been doing to stay with him. Keep him with, so I'd build a four to six week program of progress. Give him a chance. I'd start with baseline testing. Give him a chance because you've tried all the main stuff. Set a plan for four to six. By the time he gets to ortho, it should time out right. Look at strength index. Four or six weeks to build that with progressive overload. You can tape them in between there and your top three to five things and give them a target that you have six weeks to knock out the variables that we haven't attacked yet. And I think that'll give him confidence before he goes into surgery. We're just hitting all the markers that we possibly can. We're getting you flexible, we're working on your balance, we're working on your strength, working on, on your mechanics. At this point, if ortho says that you want to go and that's in line with what you want, great. But I don't feel comfortable throwing you in there without having tried this piece yet. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would go progressive overload. Out of everything you've said, that's the only thing left over for me that he hasn't done. Consistent taping, pick your top three to five things that he likes with the tube rotation, everything else, and then progressive overload him whatever with whatever he can whether that's lunges, BFR, everything else, so he stays out of that pain cycle. But it gives him time to tap into six weeks of saying, can we build, I mean, you could probably even just look at his circumference and see if we can build that mm -hmm. objectively and say if that's a challenge, and then you feel comfortable with that. If he has it at six weeks, you know you've hit everything you possibly can. And if you wanna go there, then if he says, hey, that's been feeling great, I would go another six weeks. By the time he gets into ortho and decides on that, you buy another six weeks and he can decide then if he wants to go in.
Uh, what's the big thing? What do you take away? Uh, Casey, what do you take away on that? Because you're managing this as well. Um, setting it up more in a program of like linear fashion mm. and using that as kind of the, like, we're going to keep going, but we're going to really try to hit it home before you commit to anything with the service. Yeah. I think, I, I think you have to look at it that way. Um, after doing a podcast with a strength and conditioning coach, it kind of brought me, brought me back down to reality in that um, I asked him a question. He works with, with pro athletes. And I asked him a question. In an ideal world, if you worked with a physical therapist from the start of a season, what would that look like ideally? Like before they start their sport, how would you build out their programs? His number one response was, can you give me baseline markers that are practical and that I can understand and implement and watch inside the weight room? before they start their season so that way i know whatever it is that you want to accomplish i'll turn that into a warm-up inside their weightlifting program run that for six weeks retest what are the current still challenges and integrate that there so ultimately even if they're in pain still building something that can that can be linear for six weeks that is built into their strength and conditioning and as the problem becomes when we have clients who aren't strength and conditioning we're their everything and the reality is there's no way they can fix some of this stuff if they have no baseline strength. So no matter what you do from a mechanical standpoint, they're almost like they're all bones and tendons and ligaments. There's like no muscle mass to this. So they, of course they can't accept it. But the problem is we as a profession will say two to three sets, 10 to 15 reps, and we'll try it for two weeks and if that doesn't work, we move on to something else. There's no progressive overload. So you have to at some point sit back and they're so frustrated you got to sit back and say, forget it. We'll go six weeks, a six week block of strength and conditioning, eight to 10 reps, whatever you want to build up to pick your three to five close kinetic chain stuff, and then objectively measure girth. So we can see if there's any outcome, but we normally don't think like that because we can't, we're normally dealing with pain. So we can't progressively overload them. It like obscures our thinking in an ideal world. Think if you had a, a pro athlete in front of you and you wanted to prevent pain, what would that look like? probably six weeks of strengthening slash ideal movement plus mechanical stuff. Add that in plus your normal PT stuff is probably the best way to look at that. Does that make sense, Jeff? Good. I hope. Cool. All right. Next. <laughs>